For more on the situation in Afghanistan and what comes next, we're joined now by Democratic Representative Jim Himes, a senior member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Juju. As we all know, we're just four days away from that August 31st deadline, and we've reported on the president's national security team warning of another terror attack in Kabul being likely. What's your number one concern tonight, and are you confident that evacuations can go on safely? Well, my number one concern, Juju, is um, are getting the people, uh, the American citizens, the allies, uh, those Afghans who we have put in harm's way because they helped our military, getting them out. I have never particularly liked the concept of a deadline. Now, I understand why the president has a deadline. Uh, obviously, this is an enormously, enormously de uh, uh, deadly and dangerous place. Uh, and the longer we're there, the more dangerous it gets. The Taliban do not have total control, as we saw, sadly, two days ago uh, of, of Kabul. Uh, and so I think the key here, uh, Juju, is to, for our military to stay long enough to get those people who can get to the Kabul airport out, and then, as distasteful as it is, to negotiate with the Taliban an arrangement whereby we get to oversee and protect a process, a process that could involve land borders as well as airports, to get the rest of the people out. And so you're not you're holding out hope for those Afghan nationals who helped. Take a step back for us for a second, though, in, in looking at the anatomy of what went wrong with this withdrawal. You're on the House Intelligence Committee. What questions do you want answered by the administration about this chaotic and tragic last few weeks? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And of course, you know, I've been pretty focused. My office has handled over 500 different cases of, uh, of uh, individuals, Americans and non-Americans who are desperate and trying to get out. So uh, that has been the mission. Uh, I haven't done a lot of uh, retrospection. Uh, I will tell you, though, there will come a moment where we have to have that conversation. I focused you doing, look, you can go back 20 years, you can go back 15 years. I focus on January. And the reason I focus on January is because you have a new president, uh, and the new president inherits a situation where there are fewer people in fewer U.S. military security people in Kabul than there are on Capitol Hill protecting the Congress of the United States after the January 6th uh, insurrection. Uh, with the thousand or two thousand people that you had uh, in in Afghanistan at the time, you were not you had no options. And you know I know it's fashionable and sadly in this very partisan environment people are pointing the fingers at Biden at Donald Trump. The reality is that January is a key moment because the last president left us with an untenable situation, and the new president Joe Biden and his people let that go on too long. Let's turn uh, towards what some people are calling a d digital Dunkirk. ABC News has confirmed that there was this daring mission to save Afghan allies, especially Afghan commandos. And it was carried out by an all-volunteer group of American veterans of the Afghan war. They called it the Pineapple Express. They got as many as 500 special operators, Afghan special operators, out of the country at a lot of great personal risk. Why did it have to be so ad hoc and so um, sort of dangerous? Well, I think, big picture, this is another area for us to really scrutinize what went down. You know, I have I had suspected for a long period of time that the effort of getting out those civ Afghans, the special immigrant visa Afghan, had gone on. By the way, it had come to a stop in, in, in 2020, but it was moving way too slowly. So what happens? Uh, you have a situation where the process is moving way too slowly, and a lot of those people, Afghans, who worked closely with our special operations people may not have had an opportunity to get to the embassy or to get to an American in Afghanistan, but they still have the cell phone numbers or the email addresses or whatever of the guys that they worked for. So those guys that they worked with, the special operations guys, the folks that are involved in the digital Dunkirk, um, a week ago, they were in some cases the only people who were in a position to make contact with um, Afghans who might not have been able uh, to get through to or into uh, the embassy or the airport. So I think they played a really critical bridging role. Um, you've raised the question as to whether the intelligence community was ignored by the White House or whether they just didn't sound the alarm loudly enough to the White House. I, I know you can't get into classified information, but given what you know, should the American people still have faith in the intelligence community to properly assess this very dynamic situation going forward? 
Um, yes, they should. And remember, my job is to be critical of the intelligence community. My job is to conduct oversight on the intelligence community. And it's a very privileged position because it all happens behind closed doors. There aren't journalists in the room. Uh, but yes, I saw all of the intelligence over time. And then I reviewed it last week. And again, I can't, you know, obviously I can't get into the details, but I can tell you this, that if you had seen or if anybody had seen the intelligence that I would see, that I have seen, nobody would say that the intelligence community got this wrong from a standpoint of reporting, but you you sort of got at one of my concerns. Um, there's a difference between writing a report saying, boy, things could really go south, and walking into the Oval Office and throwing a report on the desk and saying, Mr. President, you need to spend an hour on this right now. You know, that will be something that we will want to unpack. But I can tell you, and again, I can't get into the details, but I can tell you that this was not an intelligence failure. Our intelligence community, uh, over which I'm charged to be skeptical, was really sounding the alarm about how quickly and how badly Afghanistan could play out. You mentioned the distasteful option of working closely with the Taliban moving forward. Um, the Taliban reportedly uh, were given a list of names with Americans and our Afghan allies to evacuate. Does this go too far? I mean, one defense official told Politico, basically, they just put all those Afghans on a kill list. Your thoughts? Well, I certainly want to know what the facts were there. Uh, based on what I know, uh, Juju, and, and, and based on what is happening on the ground in Afghanistan, um, uh, giving the Taliban a list of Americans who need to get through their checkpoints in order to get to the Marines at the airport, that, that given what we know now, makes sense. Uh, we have not seen the Taliban attack Americans. That was part of the deal that was made under uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and so that part makes sense. But what, what does not necessarily make sense to me is that you put Afghan names on that list, too. Now, I want to reserve judgment until I understand, you know, whose names were on the list and what the logic was and what agreements the Taliban made and whether they stuck by those agreements. But sitting where I am, uh, you know, in the United States right now, uh, giving the Taliban the names of Afghans who we want out because they helped us strikes me as a very, very risky thing to do. Clearly, uh, room for inquiry there. And before we let you go, I do have to get your reaction to the declassified report on the origins of COVID by the National Intelligence Agency. Officials found low confidence it was an animal infection that started COVID and a moderate confidence that it was a lab incident. I assume you've read this report. If, if that's the case, should China be held more responsible for this? And, and how do we move forward? Well, let me let me tell you what I think, and then I'll tell you what I know. What I think um, is that uh, the report was pretty unsatisfying because the intelligence community, even though the president asked them to, was really not able to come up with a definitive answer uh, as to whether or not this was natural transmission from animal to human or whether there was a lab leak. Now, this is something that I've been reading about for a very long time in classified environments, and you know the intelligence community is a little bit at odds with itself on that. Now, why is that? And here's where you absolutely do hold the Chinese accountable. The reason for that is. That the Chinese from moment one, 18 months ago, have not been open and honest uh, with the world or with the United States with the data and the information that we would need to form uh, some kind of a judgment. Well, I appreciate all of your insights. Connecticut Democratic Congressman Jim Hines, thanks for your time tonight. Thank, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.